All right, so when looking at the ampacity of wires and cables, what does subrule 22 tell us? Notwithstanding, that's a fun phrase. So notwithstanding or in spite of those other rules, or that three wire, 12240 volt and 12208 service conductors for single dwellings of a feeder and supplying single dwelling units of row housing of apartment buildings or similar buildings and terminating on equipment, having a conductor temperature termination of not less than 75 degrees Celsius shall be permitted to be sized in accordance with table 39, all right? So what they're saying is that if we have those things met, we can use table 39. So if you jump to table 39, get to the back. The top of, uh, or the heading for this table is the minimum permitted size of a three wire 12240 and 12208 service conductors for single dwellings and feeder conductors or cables supplying single dwelling units of row housing, apartment or similar buildings and terminating on equipment having a conductor termination temperature of not less than 75 degrees. C uh, rule 4-004, sub rule 22. It directs you right to the rule. So if you guys are ever flipping between tables or trying to figure out what rule is associated with what table, they will have a rule underneath that heading. Okay. And so you can get clarity from that rule if the table's not really making sense. For uh, starters here, we see that our column one is our over current device rating. Okay, so if we have 100 amps is what we are looking for. Then we go to the 100 amp line or row. And then we can use column two to calculate the load um, for that conductor size, right? So if we look under the 100 amp overcurrent device rating and we follow that row, for calculated loads of up to so many amps, they say 89. Um, you can actually just throw that away. That column gets confusing. So just focus on that it's rated for 100 amps, um, and we're gonna use a number four, copper, or a number two, aluminum, okay? And we don't exceed those values, okay? If we, uh, oh, come on, little slideshow. There we go. Um, so column three is going to be that size of conductor to use, and it's based on column two calculation. Note that if you have a calculated load that is higher than the limit in column two, you got to use the next biggest size conductor from table two. Okay. That's the only caveat that is uh, when using this table. For example, we meet the voltage and termination temperature requirements. Our calculated load from the previous house example was 82 amps. So using the 100 amp row, that was our calculated service size, remember. We don't exceed the 89 maximum calculated load. 
And so we will use a copper conductor size number four or aluminum conductor size number two. Does that make sense? Any questions? Okay. If we were to figure out the conductor size not using table 39, okay, so if we don't meet the voltage uh, and termination temperature requirements, we must use the greater of item A or B because we had uh, B was our greater than, so we have 100 amp service conductors. Then we go to table two or four with the appropriate temperature column, which would be 60. And that would give us a one, uh, number one, or a one ought for aluminum. So that is how you would find out your um, service conductor size, given the information uh, that we've already discovered from our calculations. So are there any questions on that? No, okay, good.